I'm in school and we're singing Joy to the World in Mr. Kreutzheimer's class and I'm just got my hands in my pocket and I'm just like staring at the ground, mumbling the words and Mr. Kreutzheimer, he stands up and turns off the music and he shouts into the room. I said, anybody in this classroom that is Jewish? Uh, uh, I keep my hands glued to my side. Um, he's about to blow my cover. I said, are there any Jewish children in this classroom? Back then I didn't know how loud Jewish silence can be, but I've since learned. Two girls in the back of the classroom have their judo acutely attuned to my silence. At the end of school that day, those same two girls, they lure Slash to the back of an abandoned building to an empty lot, promising that he'd get to kiss them if he came along. But I, I never get my kiss. Almost immediately, they push me on the ground and start kicking me. I curl up in the fetal position as they begin to laugh <laughs> and sing and they shout, The Jews killed Jesus! The Jews killed Jesus! And they walk away giggling. <laughs> And in my naive glory, I'm just left wondering, when do I get my kiss? See, this is a story that my grandmother would have called a Stucken in Nishkin Hearts. It means a painful, miserable memory that stabs the heart and hurts like crazy. See, we have expressions for all the nuances of misery, just like the Eskimos have their 17 words for snow. But it was true that we Jewish boys had this insatiable drive towards the Gentile girls. Any girl who couldn't pronounce the CH in challah or Hanukkah, blonde girls that made our mouths water. The Jewish girls were familiar. We sat beside them at high holy days. Our mothers hung out with them in the delis. Our fathers hung out with their fathers at the hardware store. These girls, they were like sisters to us. Right from the beginning, they were like sisters. All the Esthers and the Hannahs and Naomi's, the Ruths, the Sarahs, the Rebecca's. But it was the Daphne's and the Tiffany's and the Stephanie's that, that intrigued us. All those uh, blonde Catherines and freckled Marys and little girls with the upturned noses. The Protestant and Catholic girls in their brown uniforms with their Ash Wednesdays and cotillions and their fish on Friday. Something deliciously unkosher about the very way they smelled. It's as if a diet free of stuffed derma and kreplach caused a fundamental organic difference in the bloodstream itself. The body odors born of shellfish and pork to the young Jewish olfactory sense was like an aphrodisiac charged with an erotic otherness. But after those girls kicked me when I was down, I finally understood the difference between the Gentile girls and the Jewish girls. And I finally understood what my mom meant when she said to me, don't tell anyone you're Jewish. They will find you. They will kill you. You will die. And I understood these words and I believed them, not because of any horrific stories she told me, because she didn't tell me any horrific stories, neither did my grandparents. I believed her because this, the silence that she carried, in fact, my entire family carried, was so loud. It's interesting, I was removed from the silence by an entire generation, but now my sisters and I became its caretakers. <laughs>